Hi guys, it's Philip Grzyn from Moscow, Russia, and today we have a special guest, Mike Ferreira for you, from USA. Uh, you live in close to Chicago, Mike? Uh, I'm about uh, three hours from Chicago. I'm uh, west of Chicago. I'm right on yeah. the, the Mississippi River. Yeah, nice to meet you today. And uh, uh, everybody who is not familiar with Mike's doing, there's a link in the description for his uh, Facebook group, Ancient Miner Earth. Uh, it's, the group is growing, actually. It wasn't that big the last time we chatted. Right now we have like 600 men already there. So is it really productive or still uh, pending to emerge? Well, uh, it's it's growing. Uh, uh, a lot of the people that have joined already have posted wonderful things. Uh, it's just too bad that Facebook just kind of makes it hard for the general public to see this kind of stuff. And so that hampers, I think, everyone's ability to grow their groups. And I'm no different. Okay. I don't see any any Facebook censorship because you know I'm not really often uh, logging lately because you know so many business uh, and uh, so many stuff going on this year in 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 my job so you know so many clients and uh, just don't have any time to look up what's going on on Facebook and uh, are there any good ideas but what if actually remember from February is the post in the uh, electric discharge similarity uh, with the Slavic and pre 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 um, pre Christian God pre Christian God Slavic God Perun who had this uh, lightning ability he was you know throwing lightnings and so we have the same with Zeus which is ancient Greek mythology top God and uh, I was thinking that that could be possible explanation in mythical way of how they were, you know, doing this electric discharge in mining. Like somebody was, you know, having some air, aircraft or something, you know, because sometimes they represented like throwing uh, lightnings from the sky. So uh, something like that or maybe that was a person who was standing on the ground and throwing lightnings into the ground which is also uh reminds me of um atmospheric atmospheric electricity and all this stuff that could be captured right now with any methods possible so what do you think about it well i think the the stories of gods and things uh my books are li or lightning bolts or uh uh, just a story, uh, kind of like the symbolism for the idea of uh, electric mining. Um, the electric mining that I talk about isn't really lightning bolts coming down from the sky creating uh, 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 metal fulgurites in the ground. It's a quite different uh, kind of thing. It's uh, more akin to uh, how they uh, make those uh, Lichtenberg figures. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with those. Yeah, yeah, familiar. familiar. Um, they're like, usually you'll see them there on a, uh, like a square plane of, uh, of uh, acrylic, like plexiglass, and they'll have a lightning bolt in there. And uh, what they do is they take those pieces of acrylic and run it under a, an electron accelerator uh, and that builds up the, uh, the electrical charge of that piece of acrylic and then they take a hammer and a nail basically and strike the edge or, or somewhere on that uh, piece of acrylic and a lighting bolt will emerge from that spot and, uh, and then when it cools you got a lighting bolt inside of a piece of acrylic uh, I think what happened uh, uh, as far as the, how the ancient miners mined the earth is uh, they use, I think, the same basic kind of idea. They, they have an uh, electron accelerator above, and uh, it uh, builds up the uh, voltage in the ground, and then they discharge this built up voltage to the ground, and it creates a metal fulgurite. However, in order to make a metal fulgurite, you just can't shoot electrons into the ground and 
strike it with a nail because it won't work. You have to have the proper starting ground to begin with. Uh, so in the very beginning, uh, the earth, uh, if you were to walk on it on day one before the mining began, uh, it would look nothing like it looks today. You wouldn't be walking on the ground that we see today. What you'd be walking on is uh, layers of uh, clay, uh, water, and uh, whatever else that they put uh, in this mixture to make all this stuff happen. Because uh, I don't really know what they what they use. Uh, if I did, I'd be rich. So you, you, you're trying to say that this charge is you know, more like something like what we have right now, a ground in effect, right? So when the electricity is spreading through the ground, right? So it spreads through the ground uh, horizontally, you know, along the, the surface of, uh, below the surface, kind of like a lightning bolt would be right in, in the sky. And uh, these things uh, would, would have been giant. They would have been miles long. And then uh, what they did is they, they dug this, this uh, metal fulgurite out of the ground. Now, if you can kind of imagine a, uh, a lightning bolt, uh, here, let me, can I sh let me show a picture here. Okay. Uh, uh, wait, let me, uh, all right, you can see that, right? Yep. All right, this is uh, maybe the world's largest fulgurite that's intact. It's in a museum in uh, Indiana, uh, which I hope to one day after the whole COVID thing goes away, they'll open back up and I can go in there and take some pictures of this thing. Um, but what I did, but this uh, fulgurite here is laying on the floor. Uh, and I highlighted in yellow and I put red, red circles around uh, 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 parts of uh, this fulgurite that ha has certain looks to them. These these looks that uh, that I circled in red, uh, these are the uh, these are little clues of electrical discharge, and I don't know why they do it this way, but you see these little uh, uh, like the end of a of a flathead screwdriver kind of thing. Um, so imagine this uh, lightning fulgurite is uh, it hasn't been dug out of the ground yet. And it's and it's below the surface of the ground. And imagine it's way bigger. And now imagine you were to uh, go dig the fulgurite out. And imagine you dug this fulgurite out very carefully where, where you just dug right down to where the fulgurite was and you pulled it straight up and out of there. What would you have left? You would have a channel where the fulgurite was shaped like Fulgurite, right? Yeah, the form. Yeah, it would be a channel just shaped like this fulgurite. And uh, uh, and now, if you got inside this channel, what would you see? You would see it mesas now. Uh, the spots in between the branches of the fulgurite would now be a mesa. Are you with me? Yep. Okay. Um, then what? The, then what they do? Yeah, everybody in the chat, if you have, uh, you know, ongoing questions on whatever we're talking right now, just put them in the chat and we keep on, you know, checking and answering it and adding up to whatever Mike is presenting. Uh, this whole idea that I present is uh, it's kind of hard to understand. It's hard to explain. Uh, it takes a while to wrap your head around uh, this idea. Um, so anyway, all right. So you pull this. No, let's start with the with the idea. The idea is very simple, guys. There was an ancient mining technology, and they were using it. Definitely, we see a bunch of visual uh, consecutive, uh, not a direct, right? It's it's a consequential evidence, right? It's it's not direct. It's only right now a theory that everybody's working on, and uh, we see so many terracons, the waste piles, and the tracks of instruments, and huge uh, parts of uh, petrified spare parts, and uh, bowls that could possibly be used in the bowl mills, which are grinders for the mining waste. And Mike is explaining us the electric discharge. In the previous series, 
if you haven't watched that he was uh, expanding on uh, hydraulic mining right and right now this is the the product that we can see right now in the museum right it's the object that's actually existing you can visit it and take a look yeah um so uh this this fulgurite that they would pull out you know it wouldn't look like this lightning bolt fulgur this lightning fulgurite because when a lightning bolt hits the ground today it just creates a boring uh sand sand like or dirt like fulgurite because there's no goodies in that material it's it's already uh, material with nothing going on so that's why you just get a boring fulgurite now the fulgurites that the miners made, they would have been made of gold, silver, and copper, and they would have been uh, blinged up with uh, uh, with minerals. And, and everybody knows that minerals have a lot of bright colors. You got your uh, your greens and reds and all kinds of beautiful colors. So these these fulgurites would have looked amazing. And uh, and and. Uh, you know, they, they didn't mine like we mine. They, they, they just, they make the metal. We, we don't make the metal. We go try to find the little pieces that they left behind. Uh, let's see. So where was that? All right. So you pull this, this full right out and now you got, you got some maces there. Right. And now what are you going to do? Well, what they do is they didn't repeat the process where they where the, all these remaining maces that are left in there. They'll, they'll take the, exon, uh, the electron accelerator again and they'll jack, jack up the voltage in each one of these mesas and discharge them again. And then what you're kind of doing is, uh, wait, where do I have this? So mesas is, are the spots there where they proceed the further discharge, right? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna redo each mesa again and create a fulgurite inside of each mesa that also. Uh, and I have uh, something I put together on this, and I'll be darn if now I don't see it. Uh, what did it fall into? Did I throw it in there? Oh, here we go. All right, so so instead of you, you know, uh, you know, you're obviously seeing the fulgurite there. Pretend that's a channel now, right? That fulgurite's gone, and it's just uh, down below the the surface of the top of the of the mesas that are there. So then they take, uh, you know, let's say this mesa that I put the red on, they uh, jack up the voltage and they discharge it again, and they create another lightning bolt inside there. Have you estimated uh, the the amount of voltage, or the you know the special numbers or whatever, uh, w from which we can see the phenomena actually, and practi practically you know, do it? That would be above my pay grade. I I don't know. Uh, when they make the Lichtenstein figures, I believe uh, they jack the voltage up maybe three to three million volts or five million volts or something like that. So this is not possible in the home, you know, equipment or something. This is going to be professional equipment only, right? Well, I bet you you could do this on a small scale if you had the right piece of material that you're working with. And that doesn't exist anymore today. And there's a question from the uh, from Bushwalk and Tateri with Berserker Bear. And he's asking if they were using this electric discharge method as a diagnostic for the for, for, for where the metals actually are. No, they created the metals. Yep. Okay. In the beginning, the surface. So this is like created from nothing. It's also impossible, right? So that's probably the containment of these metal metals in the ground were technically used to combine these forms. No or they just use it from nothing? Well, that's why I say layers of certain starting materials, and I don't know what they are. So probably they consist of something, right? Absolutely. Consist. They physically put things there. Just, just like what they do right now with the underground drilling and mining, and they take the probes and they see how much of this or that element in this certain probe on this depth 
and so on. So this is like the way to diagnose this. Probably drilling is the best method to do that. That's the ancient miners wouldn't have needed to uh, do that because they put the layers of starting material there. They would have known exactly what was there already. Look, look at this idea as electrical alchemy. Right? If you think about alchemy that we all think about, you mix stuff together and you make gold somehow, right? Well, how about the idea that you mix stuff together and you apply electricity to it and you make gold? That is what they did. I have no idea what they used, what the chemicals uh, or the elements or whatever you want to call it, what they used. I, I'm uh, certain that they used water, mercury, uh, and who knows what else? I don't know. If I if I knew the answers to those things, I yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, <laughs> you'd be rich, man. Yeah. <clears throat> so when they make this second layer of fulgurites, right? Then they go in there and they take it out again. And then what do we have left? We have more, many more smaller masons, right? <clears throat> By the way, before I forgot. Uh, there's a method of growing metals on the sea bottom and the Japs use it currently. It is like a plantation. So and they create this concrements with this whatever bowl form and then they suck it in with some type of pumps from the sea bottom. So it's actually they create it from the water. It's what I suppose because water consists of many elements, right? So and they uh, electrically, you know, create this form of a bowl which is growing as a concrement and uh, you know grows into a metal huge metal <coughs> bowl and that's a method that they use right now for mining because they don't have much resources there and they all you know what they have is a bunch of sea so maybe this is also the method creating something from the mud and water and uh, this charge is accumulating that in a certain shape after this church maybe but i think they set it up with precision they knew exactly the layers of material that they needed uh, well perhaps they could be scanning it before so they don't waste their time in, in you know well attempts uh, i don't know i think they uh they knew it was like a cake mixture right two eggs so much milk blah 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 mix it up, put it in the oven, whatever, right? I think that's how they did it. They, they, they knew what they needed. They layered it appropriately and they discharged it. And uh, I think that's where it comes from. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then what, well, we got a lot more bases, right? So then you can take these bases and, and uh, do them again. Right? And then you'd have even more mesas, right? And then it gets to the point where these mesas get too small. And then they either, because uh, 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 let me back up a second. Uh, uh, the, the miners were, you know, they created uh, uh, metals electrically, but they mined hydraulically. So they uh, used their hoses to, to uh, basically uh, wash the waste rock off the fulgurites, right? And so at the end, when they get to where these mesas are too small, they either wash them down to ground level or they leave them. And the ones that they leave become the mesas and the rock formations and stuff that we see today. Yep. Each, uh, each mesa that you see out there today, there would have been a, a metal fulgurite wrapped around it. And why they left some of these, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe they're good for the environment to have mountains and different kinds of things here and there from time to time to help with uh, places uh, for animals or for weather and different types of things like that. Yeah, at a certain point, when you talk, you maybe like move some pad or something, and the mic is level drops significantly. Oh. Maybe you can, you know, scoot, scoot over a little bit to, to the computer. Okay. okay. That is a good material. Uh, what about uh, the actual uh, 
so-called natural minerals. Can you expand on that one more time? Well, I don't... the minerals that they could possibly mine with the hydraulic mining. Are there any ex examples that you found in your libraries or whatever you were searching through? I'm not sure quite exactly what you're asking there. I think minerals are created also electrically when they're making the fulbrides. When they, the material that they need to make the copper, the silver, the gold uh, is also, also creates minerals at the same time that the metal is made. And these minerals, uh, I mean, some minerals are useful, some minerals are not useful. Uh, the minerals that they uh, uh, remove from the from the metal become the, the minerals that we use today, and the minerals that we find in uh, mines, and the minerals that we find under the ground and stuff. Um, okay, and uh, there's a question: How big must their equipment have been? I don't think it necessarily had to be really be that big because they were hydraulic miners; they mined with hoses. They would have needed big, long hoses uh, and equipment to carry these hoses around. But we, we all like to think of mining as having trucks and, and giant machines and excavators and all those things. The miners didn't use excavators. They were hydraulic miners, just like the gold rush miners in California in the late 1800s. They didn't use excavators and end loaders and trucks and stuff they used hoses and then the slurry that uh, uh, that the, that the water uh, created when it, you know when it hits the rock uh, they filter through that slurry to find the gold and that and the ancient miners well they were mining giant pieces of, of, of gold so they didn't really even though I'm sure they, they filtered through the water to find the smaller pieces uh, they just pulled that stuff out. Yeah, so actually the, 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 the hose technology, you can check it out in your fire department. For, you know, it's the same method, but, you know, maybe a little bit more pressure and a bigger pump or something, not just, I don't know. So. Well, I don't even think that miners use pumps. Uh, the gold rush miners in the 1800s didn't use pumps. They used uh, basically falling water through pipes to get that pressure and that's what yeah whatever you you can use to get the pressure whatever is more you know possible maybe you can use an electric pump if, if there is you know yeah. source of water maybe you can use a drill water which is coming from the pressure or maybe you can use a waterfall who knows so this is depends on how you perform it uh here is where this is how i think the water comes in i think it comes in from outside the dome it's coming from somewhere up above, and it just comes down. And the uh, the, the, the distance of fall there is is great enough that it creates uh, um, the water pressure needed. Yeah, there is a question uh, uh, about the holes in the tundra where they mine for uh, mammoth bones, right? And they also use this method also because they. They turn water onto the frozen areas and just fight, you know, beat off all this frozen material, clay, mud, and stuff like this, and get the ivory. Makes sense. The, that's a, probably the same principle. Yeah, sounds like it. Sounds like it. You don't see a lot of uh, hydraulic mining today because hydraulic mining creates a lot of uh, a, 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 a water runoff. And that's a lot of pollution wanting to go everywhere. So, so much of the mining is done, uh, you know, using uh, equipment. And uh, which leads me to something else I want to talk about here real fast. Uh, and why do you think they started using this heavy equipment? Is there an idea of why actually? Because I think they could probably use the this heavy equipment and uh, just to erase all the like small brigades of people that could possibly mine, right? So they can be concentrating the mining industry in certain 
hands of certain owners and uh, erase everybody else from this mining. Just like what we have right now in Ukraine, where they mine for uh, also the precious stones, uh, which are like uh, pine trees oil, petrified pine trees oil, how, how do you call it? Amber or something. Yeah, very semi precious stone, amber, but in very, very big, you know, natural forms. Very, very heavy and very, very big, just concentrated in one place. And people just earning millions and millions of dollars from there. And yeah. now our government sees that they don't let those people mine anymore. They just, of course, put, put the big fans around it and just put the people with the machine guns and so on. So private companies, private security companies surrounded the area and kicked out everybody from there. And this is a whole big ecology there. Ecology is starving just you know catastrophe there all this mine you know byproducts and they probably use also hydraulic mining there because everything is just you know big big swamp of mining waste yeah yeah oops so wow. people, could, people can do it probably with their own efforts and their with, the, with friends and uh, even the family can go and mine them uh, you know, like a couple million dollars in a couple of days. Yeah, now it's yeah. over. <laughs> now it's over. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of look at modern mining today as there's kind of like two places to mine. You're, uh, most of the mining, like, for example, well, almost all the mining basically is is mining uh, uh, ores and not the, the metals themselves. Uh, for example, we do not mine copper. We mine copper ore. Ore. Yeah, we mine copper ore. Uh, and those and those are the mining operations that require the billions of dollars and all the equipment because ore contains very minute amounts of copper or gold or silver or whatever it is in them. So they have to uh, excavate just tons and tons and tons of material to sift through to be able to get the uh, you know the metals out of them and if you're just a small scale operation you're never going to get anywhere with that uh have you ever seen that uh, show on tv where they uh, like the gold rush shows on the discovery channel they got one one show where they or there's this group of guys and they uh mine the fast running uh, small mountain streams have you seen that one probably not that's where you'd find native gold that's where you'd find uh gold in its uh, original form because those uh, uh places where water's running through those were channels that an ore fulgurite ran through in the first place or uh, not an ore fulgurite a metal fulgurite ran through in the first place so that's where you would find pieces of native place your gold and things like that um like I said, most of the mining is mining waste piles of the ancient miners. Most of the mining that's done on the earth today is mining the waste piles of the ancient miners. And that's why there's only like one or two percent of the actual metal in, 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 those, uh, in those ores. Because the miners took it out already. Those ores are the waste products of the ancient miners when they were sifting through the garbage to, to pull out the, the metals and, and the, a little bit of metal that's in them today is the little pieces that, that escaped them. Well, let me show you a picture here. Okay. Uh, on the top two rows, that's native copper. And native copper can look very different. The color is kind of similar, but the shapes can be kind of crazy and look like a lot of things. These are just tiny little pieces that you can hold on your fingers because it's very rare to find any big pieces of native copper. Um, the bottom two rows of, of, of rocks there, that's, that's copper ore. That's what copper ore looks like. And there's different kinds of copper ore. Each one of those rocks down there has a certain name. Uh, and I believe uh, uh, for copper, it's like maybe one to three percent or something like that 
uh, of uh, each one of those pieces actually has copper in there. So they have to process all of that stuff to get tiny amounts of copper. And that's why copper mines are so giant, because you need giant trucks to, uh, to take away. Uh, uh, yeah, how, how do you call those, uh, you know, fragments? Do you have a special name in English for them? Na native, native fragments of those native rocks. Well, I don't know. I don't know that you would call them native in rocks. Russian, in Russian, we call it samarodok. Samarodok is literally born from itself. If you translate it in English, oh. so yeah. it's it was born from itself. So it was created by well, itself. Yeah. I, well, I agree with that because minerals were created. Uh, out of, you know, like I said, out of the starting mixture. So they, uh, they uh, you know, that's, so they'd be native. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't realize that, you know, if you were to look at gold and do some research and you look, uh, look at it a lot, you'll notice that they talk about native gold and native copper and native silver. Uh, that's, that's the original pieces of, of, of gold on earth. And the reason they call it native is because it was born here. Gold didn't come from exploding stars, and and then somehow that coalesced into the earth, and then the earth formed, and then suddenly there's gold spread through the earth. That's not how it works. Uh, gold was created on earth. That's why they call it native gold. Um, and this little picture I put together here, uh, if you were to, if one was to research this stuff, you would see that even today we mine waste piles from just years ago. Um, because mining waste always has a little bit of metal in it because no one's perfect in their removal systems to where they get every, every speck of gold or silver out of there. And so even today, we mine waste piles. So the idea of mining waste piles, we do it today. So are the big mines that we mine today, are they ancient miner waste piles? They look like waste piles to me because they're flat, they're under the ground, they're all together in one spot, right? So that's what, yep. I think that's what we really do. We mine the waste piles of the ancient miners. And that's why the copper waste is all in one, the copper ore is all in certain spots where it's all together, and gold ore is all in certain spots all close together. Because where they process the gold and they process the copper, that's where they were going to put the waste, right close by. And they'd put it all in one spot. But of course, there was multiple spots where they put all this waste, right? But it, would, it wouldn't like be spread out throughout the whole plane of the earth. It's, it's in certain locations. And these certain locations happen to be the shapes that I've talked about before. Uh, the shapes of the lightning bolt uh, 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 you know, when it's, you know, if you think about it, it's under the ground, they pull it out, blah, blah, blah. Those, those mesas become the shapes of, of, the, uh, of the mining pits. And then, uh, you know, after they, they dig down lower, they backfill these pits. And uh, these boundaries where these fulgurite, fulgurites, uh, metal fulgurites ran, those would become the boundaries of countries the boundaries of uh, gold mines, because some of these uh, if these spaces that they backfilled contain the gold waste from, from gold smelting. And some of them are the copper waste from copper uh, 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 smelting. And, and, uh, yeah. and, it, and it creates the shape that could be used because it's, you know, probably has some certain properties and the more preferred, preferred by those who build roads and the railroads and the channels and the rivers. So right? the, rail, the railroads were built around these quarries. I, I, did we talk about that last time? I yeah, was a little bit? We, were, we were touching the pro, this topic, but probably yeah. you could expand on that one more time because many people didn't watch oh, that video. Okay. I really love the, the railroad stuff. The railroad stuff is very fascinating to me. Um, here, let's, uh, let's, uh, I don't really know why Martin Litka starts each time after <laughs> I do. I don't even, you know, tell anyone when I, we were only me and Mike knew that we, we were planning to start today. So 
that's definitely not uh, on purpose. Uh, all right, here's a here's a railroad. Here's a you know just a segment of a railroad map in Michigan, and uh, there's a lightning bolt. And the key to understanding this whole idea of uh, of, uh, of these understanding these shapes is to focus on the empty spaces between the branches of the lightning bolt, or the empty spaces between the branches of the fulgurite, because these empty spaces are what dictates the shapes that we see on the earth today, the shapes of lakes, the shapes of countries, the shapes of railroad tracks, the shapes of roads, the shapes of almost everything. Yeah, and a place now, of certain uh, population objects like cities, villages, towns, yeah, states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, the towns were built around stations, and stations were built on the railroads, and railroads were built on the electric discharge paths, right? Yeah, well, uh, uh, when I did that very first example, I said, imagine you dig up that fulgurite, blah, blah, blah. Imagine you dig that fulgurite and you put a train track right there where that train ran. And then the empty spaces in between that giant fulgurite, you start digging downward, doing the electrical discharge thing and going down in levels. And then you got that train track around the big part of the quarry, the original fulgurite, and that's where they haul up the the metal and they put them in those trains and they take them away for processing so each each one of the original fulgurites because remember they do multiple fulgurites they do it once they do it again they do it again masons get smaller masons get smaller but on but when they do it the first time or uh, uh they 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 uh you know that's where they you know put the railroad tracks and that's where the roads come from because you need to be able to to haul away the metals. There you go. I'll just show you a, a number of pictures here, real fast. Uh, yeah, let me. Yeah, some because sometimes you see, you know, states and counties are rather, you know, geometrical form, and they don't have this, you know, crazy forms. But when you look at the roads and you look at the railroads networks you understand what, what mike's yeah. talking about like this idea of these shapes there you know because if you look at the states and uh, uh the shapes of the states in the united states they're all they don't all they don't some of them have these shapes but a lot of them don't they're more square and they got straight lines and and and, and things like that uh, 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 uh everything is not necessarily have the shape to it some of these lines are artificial and who knows why they they did that however the shapes even though you might not necessarily see it on the top but if you look below the surface you see these shapes where for example where the the gold fields are and where the uh the peat bogs and things you know where all the different resources might be located within a state like say a state that looks like say utah which is kind of a square thing right but if you look at the geology of utah you'll see the shapes all over it yep. so, so some places were divided up statewide slightly differently and not using these shapes uh, and uh, most of the places around the world are all based on the shape they're, they're most of them are all fit right in line with all this stuff now in this picture here i, I find it really interesting because if you uh you know, if you look at the railroad map there on the left, uh, and then in reality, it fits in that little red square I put right there. And when you compare it to the roads, you got to admit the roads and the railroad tracks look exactly the same. Yeah, I can certainly confirm it on, on Wyoming and Colorado, where I was, you know, spending a lot of time in 1995, and I found out so many shapes there and i remember all those creeks and all those roads that you know bending all over and so on so i understand what you're saying i'm hard pressed to find anything that doesn't have the shape in it the shape is just absolutely in everything roads railroads lakes this is everything things under the ground Yeah, so there's a, there's a little bit of railroad stuff here. Let me show you a cool map. Uh, let's see where I have that. 
Uh, oh, no, wait, no, that's not it. Where is it? Oh, let's look at this. I mean, just this map is allegedly from 1890. And just look at all those railroad tracks. And I'm not sure how familiar you, familiar, uh, you are, uh, Philip, with the history of the United States. But in 1890, there in no way was the money, the people, the demand uh, to build all those railroad tracks. I mean, look at them all. They're everywhere. There's no way. We inherited these railroad tracks when we came here. This is a long other story. Um, these railroad tracks are already here. There's no way we built those. Imagine how many uh, uh, iron, uh, 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 what do you call a place that makes iron? <laughs> how many iron foundries you would need and how many iron mines you would need to make all that metal for all that track. And all the, and you're just looking at a lines on a, on, a, on a page here. In reality, there's trestles, bridges, all the work to level up the ground and make the, the trains be able to flow efficiently. I mean, my God, there's no way we could have possibly done. That. We could have possibly done that. These, these trains are already here. I, I've been reading Bernard Baruch, who was uh, four or five presidents, uh, special counsel. Uh, and national security and so on and he was dealer and trader in new york in in the beginning of 20th century he was uh, on the same team with many big players like morgans and so on he knew rockefellers he so on and he knew woodrow wilson he knew roosevelt everybody so and he was you know participated in many of those deals of so-called swallowing the minor railroads by the big systems like south pacific railroads and so on and, and they were like a big scam and they that's what i think they just you know were raising monopoly to raise all those minor railroads to you know so everybody could depend on their major pathways and they could be raising those small you know evidence that was from before is what you see a bunch of railroads in, 19, in, in 1890 and then it's just starting to disappear in a big scale right now you don't have any railroads in this number well i think a lot of them they they've abandoned them i mean because we don't need that much track right we yeah need, you know because there's no economic efficiency in no, that no right and yeah. it was it, it was created artificially it was created by, by those monopolies, by those who were paying big money and uh, creating those positions in loan, loan positions on, in the stock markets. I forget the, the, the big names of the people in history that ran all the railroads, but they inherited those railroads. They, they didn't build them. They, were, they, they either took control over them or whoever the powers were be at the time took control of them and give them to them. I don't know if you've ever seen the pictures. Uh, I'm sure you have, Philip. You're the mud blood expert of uh, people on digging railroad tracks. Yeah, I had a certain collection of those, like yeah. five and six of those, and same yeah. time. Yeah. And yeah. whatever I was trying to find the construction pictures, I always found something ridiculous, like construction or repairing the bridges or something, and not even you know constructing the roads itself. And who were actually producing so many rails? Where they yeah. got all those resources? Exactly. Who was paying those people? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I I've spent time looking for uh, railroad construction photographs too, and maybe I've seen a few dozen where they allege that they're building the railroad, right? But then when you look very closely at these photographs, you can see they're not building the railroad. Like these guys in this picture here, they're not building that railroad, they're undigging it. And so on some of the other pictures that you see where they're saying they're building the railroad, they're not building the railroad, they're replacing a piece of the track. Or they're standing around looking like they're doing something when they're really not. 
I know yep. it's, I know it sounds crazy, everybody, but it's just what we see. Yeah, so that uh, train track there, I would uh, see if you would agree, that's covered with some mud from the mud flood. Yeah, and everybody who is skeptical about mud flood, remember the case that was in, in, in Wales in maybe 1960s when uh, the huge waste pile was sliding towards the school and a bunch of people died, like 200 people, including school uh, and high school students who were buried oh, alive yeah. with those waste piles. Oh, you talking sliding. about Aberfan, that one? Probably. So. Uh, yeah, you said Wales, right? Wales in yeah the, uh, yeah Aberfan that's the one in Wales yeah yeah I've I've uh, I've got some exhibits about that and I don't I don't even know I, I I even know people from Wales who is trying to debunk the mud flood his name is Creaky Blinder and he doesn't even remember that what was happening in, in in the period that he was probably already living because he is pretty old and I don't know why is he not believing that the mud could slide or can flood the area. This is very simple to find out many examples of that even in the current time, like the person just said, I was in Indonesia and he saw mud flood, uh, mud, mud volcanoes and remembered what I was saying about mud volcanoes. It could, could possibly be found anywhere right now. I, I don't think there's any doubt there's a mud flood. I mean, you see it everywhere. You see it in my town. Uh, you see it in every town in Iowa. I, I could go to any little town in Iowa and I can show you old buildings that are just like the ones that you show, where the windows are half under the ground or all the way under the ground and there's trenches dug around the building or what have you. Uh, you, you, you see that all over Iowa. And most people would never imagine, for example, this little old state of Iowa in the Midwest in the middle of nowhere full of cornfields, right? Most people would never imagine that there'd be magnificent stone structures like you see in Paris and, and Chicago and New York and stuff. But there is. There's magnificent structures that we never built in Iowa. Courthouses. Every courthouse in every town in Iowa is a, is a mud flood structure. It's an old building that we never made. Uh, schools, gymnasiums. Uh, uh, different kinds of places. You, there's there, there are thousands and thousands of these uh, old buildings uh, in Iowa, and most people would never know. And this is like a, a, a propaganda. What is hydraulic mining is doing for the country? <laughs> it's like be anti-hydraulic cartoon. <laughs> well, the reason I brought this up because I was going to give you a, a my take on the mud flood real quick. Uh, in the California gold rush. Uh, after a while, flooding started to happen. And what happened was, uh, you know, they're shooting all this water on the sides of hills, right? And this water has got to go somewhere eventually, right? And inside this, this water is, is mud and dirt and, and stuff, right? It's a slurry. And, yeah. uh, and this, how, uh, how do you call the first room when you enter your house? I think in Britain it's called mud room. Oh, is it? I forget what they call that here. Uh, <laughs> it's, where, it's where all these shoes probably, you know, <laughs> uh, placed on. And they have this, you know, little devices that you can scrub the mud from 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 your, you know, boots. Oh, and yeah. It is really unbelievable how, how could they build all those structures you were just talking about. I know. All these landscapes filled of mud and swamps and whatever, just, you know, yeah, unimaginable. True. There's so many structures on the earth that there's just no way we we could possibly have done that. But uh, it, 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 you know, after they got going on the hydraulic mining and in the in the gold rush, what happened was this silt would start to build up in these uh, river channels, and then when it rained uh, in the spring and you get heavier rains, these channels are already full full of silt. So then you get extreme flooding, and and I think that's what happened uh, after the hydraulic mining of the whole earth. The mud flood is a result of uh, uh, of flooding that come from the hydraulic mining of the earth itself. And the reason those buildings are mud flooded, the old stone buildings, the reason they're mud flooded is because the ancient miners lived in those buildings. 
Uh, all the old structures that you see around the world today, the ones in Iowa, the ones in New York City, the ones in Paris, wherever, Moscow, uh, those old buildings were occupied by the ancient miners. That's where they lived. And uh, so when, the mine, when flooding started to happen uh, on the earth as the mining got, you know, got more and more and more and more and you got more of a mass, more of a mass, they started to flood themselves because that's just what happens when you have hydraulic mining. Yeah. There's a question. Uh, can you put the original soundtrack back into your intro? No, guys, I can't because they they bought the, the, the this this soundtrack. They, they they bought it and started copyright striking me out. So I cut each and every intro from my previous video for not being striked out. So this is why I changed the the sound and the intro so they won't waste my channel. Okay, so. That's impossible, and that was the, the the track that I actually bought on this you know website, the official website, and I had the receipt from that, and they didn't even mind. They just said we bought this soundtrack and we own it right now, so we don't care who was the original author and how he was distributing it via internet. So right now we have it, and we don't care. So that is the coincidence. Just the same as coincidence that they have if you google something related to mud flood you probably won't find any interesting links except the the ones that they want us and if you yeah. google in russian internet you find the videos that they actually talk about the mud flood that's the difference between the this censorship that they started to use since 2017 that's what the algorithm and right now many projects actually exposing this censorship like what they had with these elections and stuff like this and all those people who supported uh republicans and uh, q and all this stuff so they all suddenly started to be domestic terrorists and started to get banned from those networks right so this it's is crazy. yeah this system is working right now and uh, mike was in the facebook jail i don't know what for they put you in the jail for posting about COVID, the greatest threat to mankind right now. <laughs> yeah. And, and anybody listening, don't take that vaccine because if you do, uh, certain percentages of people in the very beginning get have an allergic reaction, and those are the people that get sick, have seizures, or die. But then the rest of the people that don't die in the very beginning over a period of months to to a year or so you're going to start to get sick from that uh, dna mutation going on in your body and it's not yeah, by the way mark zuckerberg was also uh caring about this case when he was actually uh talking to his uh employees during the, the online meeting that was recorded and linked to the project Verit veritas you can find that video right now on their channel where he was questioning the vaccines and everything and he was you know thinking about dna rna mutations and stuff like this and suddenly it was listed as an appropriate content for everybody huh. inclu including facebook and so i don't know how is that possible that the ceo of facebook is actually questioning this stuff but whatever what is this water cycle uh, thing that you wanted to talk about well i was gonna kind of take the 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 hydraulic mining flooding I get idea and kind of supercharge it. Um, okay. when, the, when, when the, uh, uh, the gold rush miners were mining hydraulically, there was already a water cycle going on because we had already been here a long time. There's rain, rivers, water, and all that stuff. In the beginning, there was no water cycle. The water cycle didn't start until the oceans were sufficiently full of water in order to have a water cycle because in the beginning there was no water because all there was is a, basically a flat plain of prepared ground there were there, there wasn't trees there wasn't grass there wasn't things to make a water cycle so the more that they mined and the more water that they then put on the surface of the earth is that as the water as more and more water 
was backfilled into what become the oceans, which were just thousands and millions of quarries that eventually become the ocean. Uh, eventually, they got enough water in there and enough water around to, to develop a water cycle. So in the beginning, there was no water cycle, but as the mining progressed over the thousands, of, probably a thousand or so, two or three or so thousand years that they were mining, the water cycle began to, to develop. And so toward the end, when the water cycle was really going, when the oceans were full, suddenly you're getting rain all over the areas that they mined that they never had before. That rain is what supercharged the the flooding that normally happens because of the silt buildup from hydraulic mines, so mining, so it just took it to a new level, and that's how everything got flooded. Uh, I think really bad. Yeah, I was also thinking about uh, dredging of the river and the channel systems that we have right now in the world, because if you actually don't maintain all this system in a, in a clear way, if you don't dredge the and clear the bottoms of those rivers, you cannot use them for transportation because it gets shallow and none of those, uh, you know, uh, ship craft can, you know, actually passage through those uh, water channels and stuff like this. And there's a video on Russian internet about explaining about all those channels and you were also expanding on river systems might as well talk about it a little bit again. <laughs> yeah, let's talk rivers a little bit. All right, so there's a lightning bolt, and there's the Mississippi River, in which I live uh, live right next to. Uh, the river is about a mile or so from my house. Uh, and I would say they do, from time to time, dredge rivers. Uh, but they don't really sit there and dredge a whole river. They might dredge a part of a river where, where sediment might build up in a certain location. Yeah, it's a very expensive procedure, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Mississippi River here, I mean, I've lived here most of my life, and the channel never moves. It, the water level goes up and down as, you know, when you go from spring to summer, you know, it's depending on how much it rains, right? So you got uh, uh, deeper water and a slightly bigger, uh, well, it's not really a bigger channel. It's just the water, if there's too much water, it goes up over the channel into, the, you know, it, it, onto the land. So, But the channel of the Mississippi River has been there forever, and it never changes, I don't think. Um, the Mississippi River was once a giant lightning bolt, a giant metal fulgurite that they mined out and left, instead of backfilling the channel, they decided, hey, we're going to use this uh, a channel that we made by digging out the, uh, the fulgurite. We're going to leave it intact and we're going to call that a river because they know we need rivers in order to farm. Uh, you got to have rivers, right? You got to have water going places so people can have access to it because we're here for a reason we were brought here or put here to farm and to do the final mining which is the mining of the mining uh, of the ancient miner waste piles and here's another example uh, this is the st lawrence river which looks exactly like a lightning bolt yeah and most people, uh, you know, a lot of times you want to kind of think about a lightning bolt as just being one solid, like each branch is a solid one piece, but it isn't. There's uh, there's gaps and uh, 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 spaces in there, and those spaces become the islands that we see. Uh, let's see, where do I have this picture? Uh, oh, yeah, let's talk about these islands here. Uh, I like to circle in red the little telltale signs of uh, electrical discharge, which is a little notchy kind of thing on, on the ends of these things. Um, when I saw this picture, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's my shape. I see it in these islands. And so then if you look at a lightning bolt, you can see that lightning a lot of times has that little island in the middle of it. And that is where those islands come from. Because the lightning sp bolt split in half right there and went around and uh, and come back together again. And where it did that, that gives you a rock that's left in place. Because when the original ground that they used was not rock, they did not discharge uh, electricity into rock. It was a clay-like material. The original earth was soft. It was not hard. 
the electrical discharge that happened in this material is what hardened the rock. And, uh, and let's see, I got a picture. Oh, wait, where do I have that? Uh, uh, there's a question to you, Mike. Thoughts of, of let's see, thoughts on salinity of the oceans and the theory of oceans not being originate, um, originally on the earth. Uh, the oceans were not there in the beginning. The oceans are back-filled quarries here. Let me, let me pull my out some. Yeah, I have a perfect example of uh, this quarry and stuff. Let's see. And a bunch of quarries were actually flooded with the water after they were abandoned. So, And the, some of those quarries are highly technological and even look like pyramids. I have an example can even screen share it really fast after you're done and it so people were thinking it's a pyramid type of structure but actually that was a quarry and right mm -hmm. now it's, you can only guess what it was before because it's flooded with water <laughs> uh, i can hear my dog barking but <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll have to look at that, that picture. Uh, so, it was like regarding the ocean, even the dog confirms. <laughs> why? Why is the ocean salty? Why is it blue? Why does it have a higher pH? And why is it warmer? Because it's mining wastewater. Because that's what mining does to water. Uh, uh, when you use water, it, sorry, stop it. When you use a uh, uh, water, the water becomes salty, and uh, minerals and things leach into this water. And the water that we see today in the oceans is the water that was used to hydraulically mine the, the earth. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, because in order to mine the whole earth, you would have needed oceans of water, and that's why we have oceans is because they're the mining waste water uh, that would, they used to mine the earth. And uh, if you take a look at the oceans, uh, yeah, we had a research actually, the guy who were riding from each lake to lake and taking those samples of water and researching them. And he totally ruined the official theory of those lakes be, being previously seawater uh, reservoirs and left over after the sea dried out and stuff like this. Like they often said, like this area was sea bottom or something. And after pole shifted, they, it became the desert or something. So he totally ruined it because he went from each lake to lake, took the samples and he proved those samples are different. Each salt water has different pH level. Each water has different metal compounds in it and so on. But it's all salty and you cannot explain it because there you have a, a, a freshwater lake right here, which is created by the, 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 the rivers and so on. And there you have the salt lake nearby and uh, you cannot even, you know, explain how it's possible. Only to be a sunken quarry. Yeah. Okay. The uh, stuff leaches off the quarry walls into the water and uh, makes the water salty and and toxic if it's a fresh quarry. And that's why quarries are not really good to swim in. Yeah. yeah. It's really fresh. Oh, it's, it's really salty water. And it even can be, you know, used for medical purposes like Dead Sea. In, in Israel, right? Where yeah. you can use both mud and scrub yourself yeah. with cosmetic mods and stuff like this, which is very expensive right now. You can even buy those Dead Sea mods in your town for oh, a very yeah. high price, right? Yeah, no doubt. But, uh, but see, the, the Dead Sea, it had a lot of time for all the bad stuff to go away. Uh, the modern quarries that we have today, they're, they're new, so they got a lot of toxins. Uh, they say that this sea is just the previously Sodom and Gomorrah and Sodom and Gomorrah story looks like sulfur mine was blown on and that's why it has these flames of fire fall falling from from the top from the from the skies because sulfur when it's blown up it's you know 
has these fountains of explosiveness and so on. This is very explosive type of stuff when it's on fire. And the sulfur mines are very flammable, I would say. I would sound, yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> uh, I get this picture here, uh, Philip. This is the bot uh, bottom of the ocean around the Marianas Trench somewhere. And uh, if you take a close look at them, you can see they look just like uh, hydraulic mining. Uh, so the oceans were were mined downwards, and and uh, the miners they mined in levels. They didn't just mine across the earth once; they mined across the earth many times, maybe upwards of thirteen levels. I would imagine uh, that they mined. So there would have been m miles of ground above this picture there where you see those you know underwater mountains there there would have been miles of ground above that that was there before but is not there now they dredge the sand from ocean to beach yes they could possibly do that well while they you know dredge the the quarry and the the sand itself could be the byproduct and uh, just you know well i think like most sand is uh, uh i believe most sand is quartz and what loves gold quartz if you see if you're a gold miner and you find quartz you get real excited because quartz is a is an indicator of gold and so like i said earlier when they pulled these 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 uh gold fulgurites out of the ground they would be uh blinged up with minerals right and one of them is quartz and so the, there would be quartz all over the the the, the metal fulgurites especially gold there'd be quartz all around it so in order to extract the gold, because they just wanted the gold, they didn't want the quartz, they had to break and remove the quartz from the gold. And the uh, uh, processing of the quartz off of the gold is what created is what created sand. That's where sand comes from. And, oh. and sand is not just quartz, there's other kinds of things that one would call sand. And those are just tiny pieces of other types of minerals that were broken off whether mechanically, chemically, or how, I'm not sure how it was all done, uh, but uh, that's where sand comes from. And now a lot of the sand they, they use to line rivers, like in Iowa, uh, the Iowa River that flows through Iowa, it's lined with sand. How could you have a, a river lined with sand in the state of Iowa? There's no sand in the state of Iowa. The state of Iowa is a bunch of cornfields, right? But yet there's sand in the bottom on the rivers because they lined rivers with sand because they wanted us to have rivers and they wanted them to work right uh so that's one way uh, uh they got rid of the sand and another way they got rid of the sand is 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 deserts like the sahara desert uh, the sand that's there which happens to be in the form of the shape of the lightning bolt the space in the lightning bolt it's full of sand and that sand is the uh, mining waste from processing the uh, metal fulgurites. Uh, are you saying that the oceans were fresh until they got polluted from the mining? No, the oceans weren't there yet. The water that went into the oceans, let's pretend it's day one of filling, starting to fill the oceans. Uh, the water that went in there would have been salty, would have had higher pH than fresh water, would have had more metals in it. Uh, they filtered the water that they pumped in into the what become the oceans, and the, the filtering of that water is what is like, for example, what salt flats are today. The salt flats is the water that is the salt in the water that was filtered out. Yeah, you have to understand that all this you know terrain is filled with la layers of water, and we don't actually have the access to all the geology that is available right now. And all this knowledge is strictly uh, coincidental evidence knowledge. Nobody drilled further than 11 kilometers deep. So it's not even a scratch. If you think in a, in a, in a, in a, in a world scale, it's just a scratch of the surface. Yes. So we don't even know how this geology is actually going on. So original, Mike is talking about the original miners, those who came and started all this huge scale, you know, fulgurite mining and all this hydraulic mining, and which we have a bunch of evidence, you can visualize that. So we don't actually know 
how this is all this geology works right now but we are on the way to discovering it and if you if you want to you know expand on this knowledge you can do it by yourself and you, know, you find out the same uh, same things that we do because it's obviously on surface you yeah, just have to take a look at it yeah it's hard to know what's out of the ground <laughs> And the story that we uh, drilled down uh, 11 kilometers or 7 point whatever miles, I don't even think that's true. I actually looked into that, and I don't believe it for a second. So I'm not sure how far down we've ever gone, but it's not very far. What I believe in is that when you start to search through all these 19th century pictures, you want to find out any evidence of constructing anything, first of all. Yeah. And that's a big question. Oh yeah. And if you take a take a look at natural geology on all stuff that is based on is also uh, all assumptions, all theories. And theory is not it doesn't equal truth, right? So yeah. yeah. So we 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 don't pretend to be scientific, but when the the evidence is repeatable, and it's observable by on each and every continent right right now so we can do it by ourselves and take a look at it why don't research it that's a good you know thing to do because we have to expand the area that we don't know and find out to see more evidence i think yeah no doubt I, but i think we've seen enough evidence that we can conclude at this point that the earth was was mined and that there's no doubt about it at this point well it's not mainstream yet so no we have, no, we, so we, have that, to, we have to elaborate a little bit more um, uh, yeah. unless we have this trend going on as it was with uh, flat earth and mud flood and tartary research a whole bunch of yeah. you know, people popped out when you know the critical yeah. mass of people understood that that is actually uh, obviously true information yeah. Uh, I think eventually this will, this idea will grow and take you know take flight. But the problem is on the internet, all, everyone's censored, so it's never really going to reach too many people. It's never going to reach the general public uh, because they just won't won't let it. It's a it's a real shame. If we had a free internet, we'd be beating these people. But we don't. Truth truth is very stubborn, and if you throw it out of your window, it's coming out from your basement. If you lock it in your basement it's coming out from the roof yeah so. yeah philip in your video of block cave mining i i saw you had in there the that crater in, in russia and so uh i thought i would yeah that very similar my, very similar yeah yeah i'll show you my my take on that i think it's created uh electric with the laser I mean, it looks, you know, because I, I don't, I don't know, Philip, how much you've looked at my work on volcanoes. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been watching some of your posts, and I've seen your comment under the thumbnail of John Levy video when he was talking about some melting something or something again, melting, melting. I don't oh, know. Yeah. You said, and you just presented a screenshot or something, and I can say that this natural crystallization of dry soil when it's drying out it's ripping apart the clusters of certain it's probably similar to what we're talking about during the electric discharge and probably it's somehow related to this random shape that it's that it takes after the process right yeah, yeah absolutely i mean the, the the rocks that he was pointing out in that video um, those are all electric rocks. If you were to take a real close look at that rock, and if you you know understood this, this, the shape that, I, that I've been showing, you'll see that the, the, that that shape is all over those rocks. It's everywhere. Those are those are those are electric rocks. Those are just remnants because when when they make the 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 uh, uh, or or the metal fulgurite, they don't just make the fulgurite in of itself, and all the land around it is. It's still soft and clay-like. The the area around it hardens, and that hardened area is those rocks, uh, yeah. like like the mountains that we see today. There's two kinds of mountains. There's 
there's uh, one kind that's waste piles, and then the other kind is these electric rock mountains, like Mount, Mount Everest. Mount Everest is a rock mass that was made, that was created, that was hardened when the ore fulgurites were made around it. And they don't want the hardened uh, 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 rock, they want the metals. So they just leave those in place. And so in, in that location that John Levy was at, uh, those just happened to be some of the hardened rock that was left behind. And the, uh, the, the structure that he talked about that kind of looked like a cobblestone road a little bit. If you look closely at those structures, you'll see that those are the, the shapes of lighting bolts, the spaces in a lighting bolt. And that's what creates these things. And you basically can see these shapes in literally everything that has to do with geology. Yeah, guys, there were, was a theory about the uh, tree stumps and the ancient tree, giant tree stumps, but uh, we don't elaborate on those right now because I'm not actually a big follower of that theory, although I suppose that possible the possibility of being those giant tree silicon era and stuff like this, all this stuff is very possible. We are right now closer to our time not those ancient, ancient, ancient times of Silicon era, or whatever. We are closer to like, you know, 500 years ago, 300 years ago, when all this that we are right now talking about was available everywhere. And that evidence is still existed. That's why we talk about it, because it's closer to our time. It's more, I can, I can feel it. You can feel it. You can visualize it and we can talk about it. But we can also talk about ancient giant tree stumps, of course, if you want to, in, in another video, right? With the, with the people who elaborate on that. But I haven't seen anybody actually having any new ideas on that, except that it was, you know, performed five years ago when we were, you know, trying to push this theory online. Okay? Yeah. I don't see any new ideas, nothing new. <laughs> They just repeating what we were saying five years ago. So think about it. They didn't move a single step to the truth since then. So why should we talk about it, right? Uh, I hear you. <coughs> I can understand why people um, think some of these uh, landforms are trees. Because a lot of them look exactly like a tree stump. And the, re and the reason they do is because if you look at the nature of trees, trees are also electrical. And therefore, when they grow, they have a similar uh, characteristics. Uh, yep, exactly. The root system is similar. Yeah, let me find a picture here of some, some trees here. Uh, um, and they even say the, the network of the forests. Have you seen that? you know, theory of the network of the forest, the electric network of the forest, right? It was also presented in the video, in, in the movie Avatar, when they were trying to elaborate on that. Like they had this certain network of the forest and those native people, uh, those Navi people were sending all those energies to each other. They were connected to those natural powers of the forest, and those I huge need, trees. I need to watch that movie. <laughs> you can, you have to watch that. Yeah, movie. I know. There's a lot of movies that have clues. It's, about miners. It's, it's <laughs> about miners. It's about it's about miners. It's about occupied areas. Yeah, of local know. people they were mining big time there, so you might might as well watch it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. I, I really like this tree crown shyness idea. It uh, it looks just like a lightning bolt because trees are electrical. And that is why trees and, and, and rocks and things look kind of similar because a lot of things look kind of similar. The veins in our body uh, uh, look electrical. Uh, ice looks electrical. All kinds of things have these shapes. It's not just uh, mining related rocks and stuff. It's everything has the shape of electricity in it. And that's why some of these rocks look like trees. But in reality, what they really are is just rock masses. Um, yeah, have you seen anyone perform any experiment on discharging actually the soil or the ground and filming it? Except those Lichtenberg figures which were performed no. on the wood, is what I believe. 
No, there's not very much uh, s stuff on that because as you can only do so much with, with, with electricity on the ground that we have today, you really couldn't do anything magical other than create a, create a fulgurite. And the fulgurite you get depends on the type of uh, ground that the lightning bolt strikes. If it strikes really cool, interesting ground, you're going to get a cool, interesting light uh, fulgurite. If it strikes a pile of sand, you're going to get a boring sand fulgurite. This picture here is supposed to be the longest uh, fulgurite in the world, right there. <laughs> and it looks like a tree rut or a tree, right? Yep. Because everything's electrical. Well, not everything, but most everything's electrical. Things that, that, that are biological, they're electrical. If you looked at the cell structures and all the different aspects of these kinds of things, you'll see a lot of uh, similar characteristics to lightning and electrical discharge. But it doesn't mean they're the same thing. That fulgurite right there is not a tree. It's a fulgurite, even though it looks just like a tree, uh, a, a, a tree, right? And just like those uh, uh, rocks that people think are shaped like trees, well, they're shaped like trees because electricity likes to shape things like trees. Yeah, I mean, this is observable evidence, guys. Yeah. And then when you get into the trees, you got to, well, one, you know, most of the people who talk about trees don't really get into whether, well, in the beginning, when it was alive, was it a stone tree or was it a real tree that had wood in it? And then it turned to stone. Right? And if it's a stone tree to very begin with, you got to say, well, how the hell can a stone tree grow? Did it use water? You know, would water be the lubricant of life of, of, of uh, uh, silicon, or was it a wood tree that turned into stone? If it's a wood tree that turned into stone, well, then where's all that wood at? <laughs> yep. <laughs> many, many, many questions. As, yeah. As, as the same questions we have with giants. Yeah. Giant creatures. If you, yeah. if you expand further, step away from what you see, what you believe in, you know, expand further and try to understand all this biology how it was working how it was collaborating how it was feeding it these giant creatures and you won't find those answers right now because everything is erased and you you probably just can speculate it imagine something but nothing else and this is visible this is repeatable and this is obviously evident yeah you can see it you can see it just like mud flood evidence is that's why it's easier to prove um, the mud flood evidence on a certain construction than to prove somebody that the earth is flat because you have to find a lot more to show and to you know practice an experiment than to show a certain building and uh, certain certain anomalies in those buildings and uh, that can coincidentally prove that it was mud flooded yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, you got to play Occam's razor to all these kinds of things. I mean, we all want to believe in, in some of these fantastical, really cool ideas, but you got to have uh, evidence that, that that you can really show that this, this stuff is really true. And just because something looks like a, a tree doesn't necessarily make it a tree. Um, you know, obviously, that our argument can be made to, to, to my approach to all this, but I, you know, I, I do more than just show that these things look like mining. I go into a lot of different aspects of it to, to, to make it more uh, plausible, if you will. Well, if you didn't know, you were doing scientific method. It's called the comparison method of research when you compare different things and find out analogies and how they you know actually work okay yeah i mean that's that's the way i like to do it almost everything i do is a is a comparison because i think that's a good way to to show what things uh really are yeah thanks everybody for joining us today i see a bunch of people trying to spam us on different spiritual information that is not actually uh, containing the topics that we uh, discussed today. So thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks, Mike. You were always good on what you were presenting. Uh, thank you, Philip. It's always a pleasure to be on with you. And uh, thanks for uh, inviting me again to, to be on your program. It was, uh, it was a yeah. blast. 
and there was uh, one of these Facebook friends, Leslie, who wanted to ask you a couple of questions. She wanted to join us today, but I don't know, something happened. Maybe next time uh, she has so many questions uh, on your end. And I just probably sent her your Facebook link okay. again. And everybody who is interested in the topic, check out the link in the description on Mike Mike's Facebook group, Ancient Miner Earth. And everybody, see you later. Bye. Bye, Philip. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.